what's it like? I have to ask. Like you, you get a verdict like this. Let's say thirty-eight million. Um, it's not the first eight-figure verdict you've had. Probably not the last. But just what, what is that like? The moment you get it, and then what's it like in the days afterwards? Right? Is it, is it something where you're now chasing the next one and seeing what do we have coming up next? Do you, do you take the time to uh, enjoy the moment at all? Like what? You know, I guess if you could speak to that. No, this this was a. Well, I will tell you that generally speaking. It's, I have a very weird emotion about verdicts. Uh, the amount of time that you put in and the process you put in and the relationship you develop with the clients, I end up becoming very close to the clients over the, the, the month or so before trial. I was at their house constantly. I was at the grave, at the, at the grave site of, of Jasmine, our little girl. Uh, I became friends with them. You know, it's an awesome family. It's awesome. And so you, you develop this relationship and the emotion that goes into that trial, when it's done, win or lose, it's a real down. It's like an emotional low. It, does, it, it, it And it's hard, like, because everybody expects you to be happy. But there's just, it's a weird, I can't really explain it emotionally. And in this particular case, we weren't happy with the result. Like, we were happy with the compensatory result because we knew that was most likely going to happen, but we should have gotten punitive damages. And that's an issue that's still uh, going to, we're, we've got a motion for a new trial on that. Uh, the, the jury did not fill out the punitive damage portion of the verdict form. And the judge, when she saw that, told him, oh, you just need to mark no to all those questions. And the judge, did, we have an awesome judge. The judge is amazing, but she just got, she made a mistake and the jury went back for 10 seconds, Mark, no real quick and came back. So I think we have a really good argument that uh, we'll get a new trial on that. So it was emotionally, it was a extremely gratifying for the family because like the part that was really, I was proud about is that my relationship with the client, she trusted me. And I explained all the data to her. I showed her the data. Like we could show her this, like, listen, my thing was, if they don't get over 30 million, I don't think you should consider the offer. And in that particular case, they had offered a million, the 250,000 was their top offer up until two, three weeks before trial. After jury selection, they offered 2.2 million. After my opening statement, they offered 10 million. And at the close of my evidence, they offered 15 million. And I talked to my client each time and she's like, if you, nope, if you think it's 30, then it's 30. And so it, it feels very good to know that my advice to her was right. Uh, 30 was the right number. And so it, it's, a, it's a, a very good, very good feeling. So that part of it was awesome. And then the part that I really enjoyed was just hugging every member of her family. And then having, we immediately went to an awesome Mexican food restaurant and celebrated with them. And that makes me happy. And it makes me happy to know that they're the courage that it took for the mom to fight, which couldn't be easy. I can't even imagine being a non-English speaking mom in a situation where your daughter's died, where the cops are saying it was your daughter's fault, or public services saying it was your daughter's fault, and then having the courage to fight through that and then trust the, the relationship we developed to trust us enough to get her to the right number. That's pretty cool. 